السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Yes, please be seated. Acha, you are students here, huh? Yes, sir. Tilawat Hafiz Mudassar Sahib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنْ ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة إدفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم وإما ينزغنك من الشيطان نزغ فاستعذ بالله إنه هو السميع Meaning, and who is better in speech than he who invites men to Allah and does good works and says, I am surely of those who submit. And good and evil are not alike. Repel evil with that which is best. And lo, he between whom and thyself was enmity will become as though he were a warm friend. But none is granted it save those who are steadfast, and none is granted it save those who possesses a large share of good. And if an incitement from Satan inside thee, then seek refuge in Allah. Surely he is the all hearing, the all knowing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Quran. Chapter 41, verses 34 to 37. Yes, Urdu Nazm, Brother Jemu Habibullah.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu pia geuzu. This is an Ugdu poem written by one of the companions of the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wa salam, Dr. Mir Muhammad Ismail Saab radiyallahu anhu in praise of his beloved master, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Badar gahe zishan e khayrul anam Shafi'ul wara marjai khaswam Basad izu minnate basad hitiram ये करता है अर्ज आपका एक गुलाम के शाह कौन है अली मकाम के शाह कौन है अली मकाम عليك السلاة 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 عليك السلام حسينا نعلم هو شرمجين جدك وأسنه نور جبين بيوس بغو أخلاك أكمل تغيين كدوش من بكهني لقي أفرين زهي خلق كامل زهي أسنتام زهي خلق كامل زهي أسنتام عليك السلاة عليك السلاة عليك السلاة عليك السلاة عليك السلاة عليك السلاة عليك السلام 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 عليك السلاة عليك السلام عليك السلام عليك السلام عليك السلام هاي جي أموري طلبة ريبورت والله بس Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, beloved Uzur. Wa alaikum. I would like to 
um, give some reports about uh, Hamsa, Nigeria. Um, the total count of students across our universities, uh, 389 students across 29 universities. We have um, 114 students across 17 universities, and we have 40 students across uh, eight polytechnics. Um, so in total, we have 543 students, uh, male students across our universities, um, polytechnics, and colleges of education. Um, AMSA Nigeria has been uh, involved in a lot of activities, and um, some of which we also organized through the office of Omori Tolaba. Uh, these include, we organize um, CV boot camps so that we train our students to prepare CVs before they leave uh, the shores of university. We also take them through opportunities in terms of internship while they are studying so that they understand how to begin to navigate their ways by the time they join um, the, uh, the people in the labor market, as we call it. Uh, we also have uh, opportunities to take them through international scholarship applications. Um, we invited guests um, from outside the JAMA as well as myself also facilitated sessions on how our students can take advantage of international scholarships, for example, the Commonwealth Scholarship. And um, we've also provided support to students who have made the application to some of these scholarships through the review of their scholarship essays and other guidance. Um, so um, in terms of uh, HAMSA activities, they also organize um, uh, tablic sessions across their various units. They organize games such as um, um, taekwondo, um, um, scrabble, football, table tennis, tug of war uh, during their uh, national uh, university conventions. So these are some of the programs that we organized uh, locally. Um, uh, Ozur, Akdas, um, the current set of um, leadership of Hamsa in Nigeria are new. We just have a transition in uh, leadership recently. So I would request that you pray for these uh, present administration that Allah guide them and make them succeed uh, and discharge their responsibilities in line with the pleasure of Allah. Jazakallah khairan. This new administration of Hamsa is uh, elected or nominated? They were elected. Did you it hold? Uh, did you hold elected? They, they were elected, sir. And uh, representative from uh, various universities came to elect the their uh, um, uh, their uh, um, executive council or uh, just the people living here in Ojokoro or uh, Lagos elected them? I don't know, it's, it's a nationwide contribution, sir. They have representatives across various units and states who participate in the election process. So it was all of the students participated in the election or only uh, it was represented by some of the universities? They are, they are representatives. We have some, so they, they, they uh, choose their representatives. Those that are they, leadership they, among they, 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 they sent their representatives to so elect the president and the and the executive committee, yeah? Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So you are Molim? Yes, sir. Acha. Where are you posted? Also, you, you once asked me this same question in 2016, and uh, you blessed me that I can go ahead and further my studies. I'm Achha. currently not. So now, now you, are, you, are, you are furthering your study. What? Yes, yeah. sir. What are you doing? I've, I've completed the studies uh, now, but I work as a sustainability specialist now. So you have completed, acha acha. So now you are no more molem. <laughs> I still serve. In, okay. I serve. I serve as much as possible, uh, but not just directly under the administration of the Jamaat. All right. Anyway, okay then. What your answers? These students sitting here, they are only from. Uh, Lagos or Ojokoro, or uh, they have come from all across the country? They are from all across the country. So, we are, so uh, there was an uh, opportunity to give rep to present representatives across different units. So we have all of them across Oyo, uh, Ogun, Kwara, and other, other states as well. OK, OK. How many universities do we have here in the, in the country? 
Uh, we have 543 of them at the moment. Minara, Minara, Minara Yunus, she will also emerge very soon, huh? Yes, sir. Huh? When are you going to start Minara University? Al Minara, or what is the name? Minara of? University. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I think uh, um, the, the Amir Saab and the Amila are really working hard. They are doing so much, and um, one of the things we are encouraging our young people uh, within the Hamsa is to begin to study for various courses so that they can also participate uh, in Minaret University by the time it starts. So, Ozo Rakdas, you asked me last week how many of our students are studying medicine. I now have the data. So, we have seven of them studying medicine. Um, we have 26 of them studying uh, computer science. Um, we have uh, 72 of them studying engineering, and we, we also have data on some other courses. Mashallah. Seven students studying medicine, 72 engineering. Achha, yes, what, sir. what type of engineering? Uh, we so, don't so, yet so, have the breakdown. So civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer yes, engineering. Yes, sir. It will comprise all of this, sir. Achha. Okay. So how many of them uh, among these uh, medical students are Wakfin uh, and all? How many of the students sitting here are studying medicine? Is, is there anyone studying medicine here? Is there anyone? None, none of them is present here, sir. Yes, no. none of them is here, sir. Achha. So, according to your report, how many of them are those who are studying medicine? How many of them are uh, Wakfi and all? We have seven of them studying medicine, and uh, I think from the record we currently have just one. No, no of I mean them you, you have you have seven students studying medicine, and out of these yes, seven, sir. out of these seven, how many of them are Wakfi and all in the in the scheme? Just one from the report that we have. One of them. Only one. So. Yes, sir. Will he, will he in, uh, in, uh, work for his life after completing his education? Inshallah, I, I believe he, I believe he will do that. Inshallah. Okay. All right. Now, what do they say? Now it is the turn of your students. Do they yes, want sir. to ask anything? Yes, they have a lot of a beautiful question for Zora okay. Das, and so I, I, I can to answer. Your I can answer very, some few questions, not a lot of questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. All right. Okay, number one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, beloved Uzur. Wa alaikum salam. President Amsa Lagos Lagos State, huh? Acha, yes, mashallah. Sir. Yes. What are you studying? Arabic studies, sir. What? Arabic? Yes, sir. Acha. In Lagos State University or where? Le yes, Lagos State University, sir. Acha, acha, acha. Huh, what, what do you say? So my question is, for some of our members who indulge in social vices, in order to save the Jamaat's reputation, is it the best option to punish them, excommunicate them from the Jamaat, or try as much as possible to correct them? You see, just to expel them from the Jamaat is not uh, the solution. Right? You have to admonish them, advise them first, and if they repent, they leave those voices then, well and good. Otherwise, uh, they can be given some other punishment. For instance, we can say, okay, if you do not want to repent, then we shall not take chanda from you, or you will be not allowed to uh, be given any uh, Jamaat's uh, um, uh, office or any service of the Jamaat. So those who are of the pious nature, this punishment even is enough for them. And you also advise them that being an Ahmadi Muslim, now we should the portray in ourselves the true picture of Islam. Not that, that people raise their fingers by saying that these are the Ahmadi Muslims. They claim themselves to be the people 
who have uh, accepted the uh, reformer of the age, the Prophet Messiah Islam, and they claim that they are going to spread the message of Islam all across the world, and they say we are better than the other Muslims, and even then, this is their behavior. So, if you you see properly uh, ask them that uh, they should change their lives and uh, try to be a true Ahmadi, then most of them, they understand it. See, otherwise, every person has some shortcomings. We cannot say that everyone, uh, we are perfect, or any one of them, uh, uh, every one of us is perfect, or even all of us are perfect, right? There are shortcomings in us. So, but those minor shortcomings can be ignored. And, uh, but otherwise, if a person is persistent in doing wrong things, then you have to be persuasive and to keep on advising them. This is why Allah Ta'ala has asked us, even the Holy, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Zakir, Inna Ma Zakir. Yes, keep on advising them. And this is your duty. Not that to expel somebody. If he wants to be in the Jamaat, then this, this expelling the person is not the solution. Right? But if a person himself wants to leave the Jamaat, then that's a different thing. And if a person has done some gross mistake, and uh, a sin, a great sin, then just to uh, keep him, uh, make him realize that uh, he has done something very bad and it is a heinous crime he has done, then he can be expelled from the Jamaat for some time. When he asks forgiveness, then he can again be included in the Jamaat. But apart from that, if it is a minor mistakes or some small vices in a person, then our job is just to advise them, admonish them, and try to uh, uh, make them understand and realize the responsibility of an Ahmadi. Okay? Zakumullah khara. Assalamu alaikum, Bilal Huzur. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullah. My question goes thus. Some Hamadi parents don't want to give their children hand in marriage to Ahmadis whose parents are not Ahmadi Muslim. Bilal Huzur, what's your advice for such parents and children? You see, if a person is new convert, he is better than the non Ahmadi. If you, the parent, you see, they are in Nigeria, or even here in Europe, or even Pakistan. If a boy and girl wants to get married, and they have some understanding, and they are Ahmadis, then it is better for the parents to allow them, to permit them to get married. Instead of saying that, no, you are a new convert, and we, we shall not give our girl or the boy, ask the boy that he should not marry a girl who is new convert. So, it is better to marry with an Ahmadi girl or boy than to marry with a non Ahmadi. And the parents should not be that much rigid in this regard. Okay? Yes, sir. Are you, do you want to get married? Are you going to get, are you going to get married? With, 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 with. Inshallah, sir. Inshallah. If it, if it is a new convert, then it's okay. You are allowed. All right, sir. Thanks, sir. <laughs> okay. Right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Wa salam. My question goes down, sir. How can we keep our members motivated towards AMSA activities despite some challenges and some immoral acts which are becoming rampant in our various campuses? You see, as I have already said, the true teaching of Islam should be practiced and portrayed by an every Ahmadi, especially the students. Right? right. So, yes, sir. an Ahmadi Muslim should be a true portrayal of the Islamic teaching. Right? And if you ask your students, make them realize that being an Ahmadi, this is their duty. And uh, time to time, just uh, keep on reminding them their bond with Ahmadiyyat by sending them the, the conditions of the bath. These are the conditions on which you accepted Ahmadiyyat. And this is your bond. And this is your promise that you will give precedence to your religion on the worldly matters, right? Right. Yes, sir. So, so if they realize it, then they will understand it. And this is a great challenge that in the present day atmosphere, the, the environment in the university even is not very favorable. Girls and boys, they get mixed up with each other, and sometimes they go to the extent to make intimate relations with each other. Right? So, yes, sir. But every student should avoid these things. Only, you should only have the interaction with the girls when you need, you are in need of any thing uh, with regards to your studies. So, it is not a sin to talk to a girl, but it is sin to go to the extent where your relations are un-Islamic or immoral, right? So, yes, in, in, in the Holy Quran, this is why the Holy Quran says, Allah Ta'ala says, there should, there should be a distance between man and woman. This is why there's uh, a commandment of uh, um, um, hijab and veil, right? So, and this is why it is also the commandment no, not the commandment or the saying of the Holy Prophet that uh, if you want to get married, you should try to pick a girl who is religious minded and pious girl. So, if our students realize all these things, then they will uh, try to change themselves. And uh, you see, we are here to change the world. We claim that we are going to reform the world. If we ourselves indulge in these bad things, then how can we fulfill our promise? Eh? In your Khudamul Amdiya your pledge, you say that uh, I will sacrifice my this, 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 this things. That if you cannot sacrifice your emotions, if you are not practicing the teachings of Islam, then how can you fulfill your pledge? So make every khadam realize that this is your pledge, this is our bond, these are the conditions of bath, and we have to fill, fulfill all these things so that we can reform ourselves and 
as a result reform our nation. And then we shall be the country which will prosper. Otherwise, if we behave like this, we, Allah Ta'ala will punish us. And we must uh, realize this fact that ultimately we have to go leave this world and, and, uh, and uh, we have to face our fate in the afterlife. Uh, right? So yes, these are the things you have to make them realize. If they understand it, well and good. Otherwise, we can only, our duty is only to advise, keep on advising them and admonishing them as I've already said. Okay? All right, sir. Right. Please, I would like to humbly ask the guidelines concerning the use of social media for Ahmad, Ahmad students. You see, in the social media, there are some good things and bad things as well. Eh? But unfortunately, the bad things are uh, outnumbering the good things in the social media, right? So, you, um, the students, can also create a platform in the social media where you provide to the people, to um, these students, to um, the youth, and to other as well, the things which, uh, which can help you to uh, uh, make you better morally, which, are, which can help you to uh, enhance your educational level, which, are, uh, uh, which can help you to better your uh, spiritual level. So, in this way, and also try to pick up, even there are those, those um, uh, I mean, um, uh, sites on, on the social media which are helpful for educational um, 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 betterment or some other things. You can also promote them and give your comments to them and suggest your khudam and students that they can visit those items and those so, social media uh, platforms which are spoiling your life, they are morally corrupt, I mean, they are, they are, their, their programs are morally, making you morally corrupt or can corrupt your, you spiritually or morally, then ask your students not to see them. See? So this is our duty. We have to do this thing. But if you create your own social media platform, that would be better. Then at least you can, uh, um, uh, those who are, are, in the, you are very much fond of visiting social media, they, if you have your own social media, which can help you to um, um, increase uh, their knowledge and make them morally and spiritually better, that will also help them to quench their thirst with regards to social media. Okay? Okay, next. Salam alaikum, dear Uzur. Wa alaikum salam. Here in Nigeria, we have members who have taken up learning technological skills rather than engaging in illegal cyber activities but are still struggling to make ends meet. What advice and prayer do you have for them to excel in their choosing path? You see, if they're learning technological skills, well, it's a good thing. If they are trying to learn technological skill, 
uh, but uh, I cannot understand your question. Engaging in technical skills rather than engaging in legal cyber activities. What, what is, why are you comparing technical skills with cy illegal cyber activities? I don't understand it. Huh? All right, all right, sir. We know on that engaging in cyber crimes involves the use of technological gadgets like phones and personal computers. But for these people, rather than taking the path that the majority take, they try to go in to learn you see, like this, is what, this is what I have already said, that uh, if we realize, realize our duties, if we realize what we are, then even after having learned technical skill and how to use the modern day technologies, how to use uh, um, uh, cell phone or emails or, or other, other, I mean, uh, and, um, no, online pro programs, then if we see that we have to uh, prevent ourselves from seeing all these things, then this th we, can, we can do it. See, the thing is that if we know that what we are, what are the good things and what are the bad things, then we shall definitely um, uh, leave those things which are not good for us. But if we don't understand, if we are, we have become addicted to those things which are nowadays um, available in social media, as I have already said, eh? and that can lead us to cyber crimes, then we cannot do anything. So it is a matter of realization. If you realize who you are and what are your duties, then you can uh, stop doing all these things. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you cannot uh, do anything else. You see, this, this is a big charm in this in the social media nowadays, and that leads to the cyber crime, right? So. This is what the Satan said to Allah Ta'ala that uh, when there was, uh, Allah Ta'ala said the angels to bow before uh, or uh, submit yourself to, 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 to Adam and Satan refused to do it. And even after that, he said that since I am made of fire, made up of fire, and this and that and that thing. And secondly, he said that now, since you have asked me to get out of here from the paradise, now I will try to uh, my level best to. make the people do the bad things. I will try my level best to make them go astray. Right? I will try with my level best to try to follow the bad things. So this is what is happening nowadays. And this, the social media and all these things are also playing their role. In this regard, they are helping Satan to fulfill his promise. And Allah Ta'ala said, that's okay, most of the people will follow you, but I will fill all of them, um, uh, I will put all of them in, uh, in, in hell. So I will fill the hell with them. So this is what the matter of realization, matter of understanding. And if we regularly keep in touch with our fellow students, with fellow members, and make them realize what are their duties, and this is the continuous process, and we should do it. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Jazakallah. Jazakallah.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi beloved Uzo. Wa alaikum salam. My question is this. How do we preach to someone who is not ready to listen to us? Allah Ta'ala has said to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu that you cannot uh, forcefully convey your message to every person. Those who do not want to listen your message, leave them. That is their fate, that they are going to face whatever Allah Ta'ala is going to treat with them. But those, try to find out those people, instead of wasting time on those who do not want to listen to you, trying to find out some people, there are quite a number of pious people even, and righteous people, or those who are uh, morally good people who want to listen to you. Or at least they would uh, like to listen some good things from you, if not completely about your religion. So, so in this way, you try to make friends who are morally good, who are of pious nature. And then when they become your friends, then you can tell them who you are, what is, an, what is Ahmadiyyat, and uh, why do we believe in Ahmadiyyat. So this, this is the way of preaching them. But otherwise, you cannot force anybody, you must listen to you. Uh, so people are nowadays indifferent with regards to religion. Although they say they are Muslims, they are Christians, but they are not practicing Muslims or Christians or uh, of any other religion. So it's better to find out the people who want to listen to you instead of wasting your time on those who are just uh, the people uh, uh, do not pay heed to your words. Jazakallah, sir. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Piyari Huzur. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How can we balance out um, enjoying life in school and religious activities? You see, the first, your first religious duty is offering five daily prayers. Right? Yes. And uh, get up early in the morning for Fajr prayer and offer your Fajr pr prayer, then recite the Holy Quran, and then get yourself prepared for your college, university, or school. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, after attending your school for s six, seven hours, when you come back, if there is homework given to you by your teachers or any assignment, assignment given to you by in the university, professor, then complete it, and after that, if you have time, you try to read, to increase your knowledge by reading some religious books. That will also, alongside your um, uh, increasing your knowledge, it will change your mindset. You will try to be change yourself and try to be spiritually and morally good. So these are the things. And if there is a Jamaat work, at least if you cannot give uh, some time daily to your Jamaat activities to Khudam al or or any other activity, then at least during the weekends we should give time to the Jamaat. But make sure that uh, being a student, your first duty is to concentrate more on your studies. Right? Yes, but alongside it, never ever leave five daily prayers and the reading of the Holy Quran. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay.
Assalamu alaikum, beloved Azur. Wa alaikum salam. The problem most students like us have is consistency, either religious wise or education wise. I would love to know how we can keep up with being consistent realistically, sir. So you say you have two things. You cannot uh, uh, go or uh, work on bo both things, religious and secular, right? And this is your question that how to be consistent in doing both things? Yes, huh? yes sir. Right? Yes, sir. The, you see, as far as your secular education is concerned, I have already said, being a student, your first preference should be your education, right? And alongside it, whenever you find time, apart from reading the Holy Quran and knowing the meaning of the Holy Quran, you should also read the literature of the Jamaat. As I have already said, it will change your mindset. You, Alongside your educational and secular education, uh, educational activities and secular education, or other uh, general knowledge books, you, if you are reading the religious books and the Jamaat literature, then it will increase your sp uh, spiritual and moral knowledge as well. Right? So, you have to give, allocate some time. You, in the university or the college, you spend only six, seven hours at the most. Our university students even, sometimes, some days, they only spend one or two hours. They are only two, three periods or one period. And then you, you have the remaining free time which, which you, you can use in the library by reading when you are in the university. You go to the library, read the books, which you can increase your knowledge. And when you are at home, you should also have some religious books, some Jamaati literature on your bedside. Then whenever, before going to sleep even, you can read those books, or whenever you find some time, you read the literature. So, this way you have to manage you allocate some time. If you have extra two, one, two, three hours, which uh, you think you should study, and you have already studied in the university and read some other secular books or general knowledge books, then you should read religious books. So you'll have to study both these uh, books alongside. And you know you're, you have 24 hours in a day. So after having a six hour sleep, hmm, you have 18 hours, right? And if you spend yes, six hours in school or university, then you will have 12 hours. If you spend uh, some time with your family and eating and this thing and that thing, then two hours, right? Yes, 10 hours. Then, for prayers and everything, two hours at the most. Again, yes, sir. eight hours. Huh? If you are going to play outside, if you are playing soccer or football or whatever it is, at least two hours, you spend two hours there, then six hours. So, in the remaining six hours, you have enough time. At least you can give one or two hours daily to your religious studies, right? and that will increase your knowledge. So if, if you only give one or two hours to your religious studies, that, will, that is enough to maintain your religious level. Or even better, better it, to enhance it. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Jazakum <laughs> khair. Assalamu alaikum, Pia Yuzu. Wa alaikum salam. Your Holiness, as a student without any job, how may we go about fulfilling the financial obligation of the Jamaat? You see, 
if you are being given some pocket money by your parents, then you can give your Khudamul Amdiya Chanda. Because since you are not an earning member, Chanda um, is not obligatory on you. And if you have done Vasiyat, then you can pay the small amount you available with you, whichever is available with you is, um, you can pay that. Right? So, other than that, and you can pay some Vakfi Deed or Tariqa Deed Chanda, if you have money. If you, have, don't, you don't have money, and your parents are not giving you any pocket money, and you are not even getting any scholarship or any other stipend, then Allah Ta'ala is not making it compulsory on you and obligatory on you, to, you must pay Chanda. Huh? You are free from all these things. But at least at the same time, to fill this gap of not paying Chanda, you can pray to Allah Ta'ala in your five daily prayers. And after that, even you can do um, uh, du'as while walking, sitting, standing, or even after prayers. You see, during the time of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some, some people, um, uh, the poor people came to see the Holy Prophet. They said, these rich people, they offered their five daily prayers as we do. And uh, they are doing jihad and, uh, of the sword at that time. And we also doing as much as we can. But uh, at the same time, they, have, they are rich people, they have the money, they can sacrifice more than us. What shall we do? How can we compete with them, these people? The Holy Prophet said that, okay, I can tell you, I can tell you, I can give you one tip. That after prayer, after each prayer, you can uh, recite, or say, Subhanallah, 33 times, Alhamdulillah, 33 times, Allah Akbar, 33 times. Eh? So, that then you can also, you see, get the same reward. Because you don't have money, so you are praying to Allah Ta'ala. So, but, but later on, when these rich people came to know about this thing, they are also starting doing th thing, this thing, this zikr. So, then the poor people again came to the Holy Prophet, so that they, these rich people now have known that what we were doing. So, they have started doing the same thing again. They are also doing zikr, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar. So, now stop them. They should not do it. The Holy Prophet said, how can I stop them? If Allah Ta'ala has given them the chance to do, to do, to do all these uh, good things, then let them do, but you will get your reward. So Allah Ta'ala rewards you for your deeds and for your intentions. Innam Allah Malu bin Niyat. So Allah Ta'ala gives reward according to your intentions. If you have good intention, Allah Ta'ala will reward you, whether you pay chanda or not. Okay? Yes, sir. But whenever you, have, whenever you have money, you can pay chanda. Or sadhka or charity. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Allah Ta'ala, Motun Fal, now is time. Now, Fal, Amur Talaba. Now it's time. So, Allah Hafiz. Eh? Jazakumullah khairan, sir. I really thank you for taking out the time to uh, listen to us today. We appreciate your time. Jazakumullah khairan. Okay, Jazakallah. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.